Hi, I'm Jeff Post Cars. I just bought this Volvo 480 ES hatchback off of eBay. Hi, I'm Jeff Post Cars. This is my Volvo 480 hatchback that I just bought off of eBay. I saw it last week and someone messaged me in the Facebook group and said, I bet you can't resist that Volvo. And here we are a week later, I couldn't resist the Volvo. The Volvo 480 was introduced in 1986 at the Geneva Motor Show with the turbo arriving in 1988. Everybody wants the turbo, but mine is a 1.7 litre Renault petrol engine. And they ran until 1995. So this is a K-Reg, it's a 1992. Three, two, three, it's one of those. And it's quite rare being a special edition model. I'm gonna tell you exactly how many of these cars are left being special editions. I'm gonna put that figure up there now. When I've done a bit more research, I've owned this car for approximately 40 minutes and I've done all my research. And by that, I mean, I had a quick look at Wikipedia while the guys were valeting it. It's like a Ferrari. A Swedish car with a French engine that was made in Holland. It's fully Europe which is exactly what we aren't right now. So this was a strange car for Volvo. Traditionally, they made boxy saloons and estates. I'll put some pictures up of those right now. See what I mean? So this was a very funky design. And who on earth came up with pop-up headlights? Who at Volvo, after they had built boxy saloons forever, decided to put pop-up headlights on this car? It's brilliant. It's a lovely little design, nice little hatchback, Four-seater, two in the front, two in the back, very comfortable, with a glass hatch. Now, this car was designed to open up the yuppie market to Volvo, and Volvo claimed that they thought their buyers would be aged between 25 and 40, with a high level of education, and career-driven people. It's like Volvo built me a car. Except when they built this car originally in 1986, I was yet to be born because it arrived in the May and I arrived in the June. Interrupt this video to read you an extract from the original press release of the Volvo 480. Headline for dynamic people. The Volvo 480 ES was conceived, developed and brought to production readiness in six years. In that development period, much thought was given to the profile of the potential buyers. From research and discussions, the key profile characteristics that emerged were individualism and personality. People with a dynamic lifestyle, people who practice a sport for their leisure time activities and people who appreciate the good things in life. Drivers who demand a car with dynamic good looks and up-to-date styling and high levels of driving pleasure combined with sporting appeal. On the other hand, this emerging new group of drivers refuses to make concessions in the areas of safety, comfort or quality. For them, men and women, between 25 and 40, probably with a higher than average education and with a career, the Volvo 480 ES is a natural choice. Not my words, the words of an official Volvo press release. So this car's almost 35 years old because the body style didn't really change from 1986 to 1995. 35 year old design, still looking good as ever, just like me. In fact, I think it's aged better than I have. If you want a modern classic, a usable modern classic, this is your car. It's comfortable, it's economical, cheap to tax, cheap to insure, very cool, and a lot cooler than leasing a one series. This Volvo wasn't actually replaced by Volvo until the C30 arrived. Now, the Volvo C30 is the same sort of thing. It doesn't have pop-up headlights, but it is a two-door with a rear glass hatch. Now, the Volvo C30 was immortalized by Edward from the film Twilight. And if you didn't fancy him, then there's something wrong with you. Hashtag man crush. But that scene where he comes drifting in in the Volvo C30, which is weird because it's a front wheel drive car, made everybody want to go and buy a Volvo. C30 is very cool. It was based on this, the 480, the grandfather. I'm going to show you around the car, do a bit of driving and tell you all about it. Oh, 
So this car was available with two gearboxes, a five-speed manual or a four-speed automatic, and two engines, a 1.7-litre petrol that was borrowed from Renault, and a two-litre turbo Volvo engine. Obviously, it's the two-litre turbo that everybody wants, so obviously that's not the one that I bought. Mine's a 1.7. Going to stop you right there, Jeff. It was a 1.7-litre for both the turbo and the naturally aspirated, and the two-litre was naturally aspirated, and that came in in 1993 for the last two years of production. Do more research, mate. But I have bought the correct specification because if you're going to get one, you need a special edition in two tone with these iconic five spoke wheels. For me, this is the Volvo 480 to have the right colour, the right trim, the wrong engine, but don't tell anyone. Well, as usual, the same reasons apply. I like them, it was cheap, and the opportunity presented itself. But mostly, I had a matchbox Volvo 480 when I was little, and there's nothing better than buying a car that you had an actual matchbox car of that you played with as a kid. So uh, if you're selling a Cavalier SRI, I'm coming for you. It doesn't handle like a Volvo. Obviously, this is a K-Ridge, and I also own a K-Ridge Volvo 940, and they are completely different beasts. This is a sporty little hatchback. It's got a nice chassis. It feels tight. It feels like it would handle, and it does feel like a sporty little coupe, completely different to my big estate. So, in many ways, Volvo achieved exactly what they were trying to achieve. Performance from the 1.7-litre engine is... There's nothing wrong with that. That's got plenty of power. The car doesn't feel heavy, you know, it, it's got a little bit of pep to it and everyone's like, oh, it's the Renault engine. So what? Have you seen this car? It looks amazing. You just roll that dial around. Boop. Boop. This person's going to think I'm flashing them. That is cool. Yes, I like that a lot. I just keep flashing them. I just like flashing people for fun. Like stopping to let people out just so that I can flash them. Yeah, look at them go. They're so cool. It's funny how one comes up first, like he's got a wonky eye. I mean, I'm a bit like that. I've got a slightly wonky eye every now and then. That's what my Volvo is like. The Volvo 480 is aimed at people who are dynamic and sporty and have one slightly lazy eye. Yeah, the left one just pops up a bit quicker than the other one. Lucky goes, huh? That's what he does. He put the lights up and the car goes, huh? <laughs> it's brilliant. Oh, I want to keep it. Cujo. Cujo, what did I say it was called? Cujo. 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 I love him. I love him a lot. He is wicked. Yeah, look, I'll give him a little flash. Wave. Oh, he was loving it. He was loving it when I popped my headlights up. Oh, he was like, oh, look, there's a Volvo with a walk eye. Look at him. He took a picture. He didn't even see me. We're going to edit that out. It doesn't always do that. It's got a few sort of little quirks as this Volvo, which I've affectionately called Hugo, because the number plate is K-U-J-O, it's Hugo. Hugo being the third most popular boy's name in Sweden. So this is Hugo. You've got to sort of say it like that, because it's a K, but Hugo is a H, and it's a J as well, so it's a bit of a weird one, but it's Hugo. Right, I'm going to show you some of his flaws. They're not flaws, they're personality traits. Other than the fact that that headlight hasn't gone down properly, He's just winking at you. He's just giving you a little wink. Let's have a little look. Right, the number plate needs replacing and the number plate surround, which is one of those ridiculous things that wouldn't cost any money to do, but would make a big difference aesthetically to the car. I've had this car valeted, but as you can see, I've already driven on lots of muddy roads because we're having the most fantastic May uh, since weather records began. So we've got a little bit of rust on this rear arch. These cars were made in Holland, not Sweden, so they did rust but that's not really anything that you wouldn't get sorted out. That's not too bad. Cosmetically, it just needs a damn good polish. The rear headlights are absolutely faded. So get some toothpaste on that or whatever the old wives tale trick is. And then I've got a bit of rust coming through that's obviously been patched on the boot there. So nothing really major to sort out. Limited edition badge, K65 Ujo. Right, this rear, this wheel arch, obviously been patched before. 
a little bit of paint there and a little bit of rust coming through on the back, but it's got the right wheels on it and it's in the right color. Around this side, really not bad at all. And as I said, that headlight does actually go back in. But look at it from there and tell me that's not a good looking car. That is a good looking car. Isn't it just, that's a, that's a fantastic looking car. That is a camera tripod, but as you can see, this car has a decent sized boot. Lots of parts in there. This is what came with the car. Fuel can, because the fuel gauge didn't work. Spare uh, boot holder upper. Bottle of water, always a good sign when a car comes in with an empty bottle of water, means the guy's just filled the coolant before he got to your house. Spare instrument cluster, repair manual, and some uh, seat fabric, because the seat fabric on this is a bit ripped. Jack, some other bits. Yeah, whatever. Not bothered, some stuff. Right. Oh, and an engine cover as well. So, there we go, that's the boot. Right, I will show you inside the car. Now, it's actually really nice in here. I've got a big rip in that driver's seat, but that's nothing that you can't sort out. And that is the problem with the dials. They work, it's just that it's all a bit peely. Um, like it's been in the sun too long. Like a British person on holiday, it's gone a bit peely. So, five-speed manual, 1.7 litre Renault engine. It's got a glove box, anything in there? Just some bulbs. What else we got? Foam mount stuck to the windscreen. And in the back, that's where all the action happens. Well, no, you know what I mean, but that's the best part about a Volvo. 480, the back seats, what we got in here? We got big cubby hole, ashtray for smoking, speakers, little tray. Yeah, nice car for four people. I would 100% own a Volvo 480. Not just because I'm highly educated, career-driven, individual, and, you know, enjoy the finer things in life, but because they're really cool, oddball cars. And I like oddball cars, you know? I'm going to do the school run now in a car with flippy-up headlights. And I bet this is going to be the only car parked outside the school with flippy-up headlights. Why would you not own a Volvo 480? They're absolutely wicked. Nice to drive, comfortable, good specification, heated seats, mine don't work, don't tell anyone. Oh yeah, the mirrors don't work either. But who cares when you've got pop-up headlights? Woo! That is a cool car. Like as a modern alternative retro, you know? Yes, it needs a little bit of a tidy up here and there. But that's way more interesting than driving around in some like lease car for three, four hundred pound a month, isn't it? Way more interesting. Yeah. Volvo designed this car for young, active people to get out and do stuff. And when you sit in the back of it, you can just imagine being aged 25 to 40, perhaps you've got your girlfriend or your wife or your partner or whatever, and you're going away for the weekend with someone else and their wife and their partner or whatever, maybe skiing in the Alps, like on the Volvo Press video, and you can see it. This is the car for two young couples to go and have some fun. Not like that, not like in a swinging way. Stop it, why did your mind go there? Mine didn't, yours shouldn't have done. Like a Mercedes-Benz SLC, you know? Like a big, cool coupe, but not a big coupe, a sporty coupe. So nothing like an SLC, because that's not a sporty car. This is the very first sports utility vehicle that there ever was, except without all of that stupid utility stuff that you never use. Just a nice car for a weekend away. Luggage, moonroof, roof racks, and your friends. No swinging. You could ski, but you can't swing. But you can if you want, if that's what you're into, that's fine. I'm not saying it's a good idea, I'm not saying it's a swingers car. I'm just saying it's a comfortable place to be for two adults. And look, I've got somewhere to put all my stuff. All of my swinging equipment. I don't know if you need any equipment for swinging. I'm going to stop that video there. It's getting to be a bit like the Vauxhall Zafira dogging video, isn't it? What's my verdict on the Volvo 480 ES? Very cool, retro, gets lots of attention, pop-up headlights. Should you go and buy one? Yes. Which one should you buy? 
honestly, whichever you can find. There's not many of them around, so just go and buy whichever one you can find. You can have this one if you want. I've not quite decided what to do with it yet. I think I'm going to offer it as an alternative in one of my Jeff giveaways. If you're watching this video and I've already given the car away, sorry, you missed it. If you're watching this video and there's still a chance to get involved in a £10 Jeff special, you might have the chance to win it. If you're watching this video and it didn't get chosen in the Jeff special and I put it on eBay and you bought it, congratulations. If you're watching this video and I put it in the Jeff special and then it didn't go to the winner and then I put it on eBay and you didn't buy it, sorry, you have missed out. But if you look at my other YouTube vi videos, I will give you an update on where this car goes. I really like it. You can see my Volvo behind as well, can't you? Just about. I'm starting to steam up in here. A bit like a swingers party. Thanks for watching.